Hi, welcome to the Entrepreneur Media Expose. I'm Ernie Chan, serial entrepreneur. Today, I'm very, very happy that I've got a long, good time old friend here with me, Mr. Patrick Thiel. Of course, uh, he's here to share with us his experiences, his whole entire life journey to where he is today, both as an entrepreneur and artist as well, of course, uh, not forgetting a performing artist and a good father. So let's get to know Patrick a little bit more in depth here. We start off with our first segment here called the Entrepreneur Quickie. Patrick, are you ready for our series of questions? Uh, well, I hope so. You make it look like it's going to be like a firing squad, so <laughs> fire away. Thank you very much. First question, where are you from? I'm from Ipoh. Okay. How many siblings do you have? Just one. What is your dream? My dream when I was a kid was to be an actor. What do you do then, today? I'm an actor. Great. <laughs> what is your highest education level? Uh, a school certificate, which is the equivalent back then of what you, you call the... Uh, uh, SPM? SPM, that's right. Great, excellent. What languages do you speak? I speak English, I speak Malay, of course, and I speak a little bit of uh, Cantonese, okay. meaning that I can order a meal in Cantonese, but okay. I will not be able to discuss world philosophy with you. Okay. How old were you when you, were first, uh, when you first bought your first car? When I bought my first car, I was uh, 19 and a half. And your first house? My first house was when I was 26. What car do you drive? Right now, I drive a very small car, a Smart for two. Okay. And uh, <laughs> who is your idol? My idol depends on which field. Okay, let's say in the acting field. In the acting field, I have so many. I admire people like Marlon Brando, Al Pacino, Robert De Niro, uh, Meryl Streep. Okay, and in the business environment? In the business environment, I admire you. Oh, thank you very much, Patrick. Yes, yes. And one last question over here in the Entrepreneur Quickie. Mm. Do you like to read? And if yes, what is your favorite book? I, I love to read. As a boy, I, I used to read three or four books at, simultaneously at okay. one time. Uh, but nowadays, my reading tends to be either uh, uh, fiction or, or magazines, really. Uh, I've almost totally given up on novels for okay. some strange reason. Great. Thank you very much. We've just concluded the Entrepreneur Quickie and now, of course, moving to our second segment, which is the Entrepreneur In-Depth, getting to know Patrick a little bit more in-depth as to his whole entire life and career. So, Patrick, you ready for the second segment? Sure. This is not going to be so much of a firing, but really for us to get to know you really better and for the audience here to learn something from you. Um, of course, the first question is, share with us, what is the main core of your uh, today's uh, business or your living today? What pays the bills? What pays the... Uh, well, uh, that question has to be answered in two parts. Okay. I, mean, um, I, I, I do... Personally, I am now a professional actor, okay. full-time actor, so I, I get involved in stage, television, or film. And on the business side, my business is still in recordings and audio uh, studios. We do still a lot of audio post-productions for, for television commercials, documentaries, and things. And we have also, in the past few years, started a very successful location sound unit. So we now provide audio uh, facilities for location film sound. And since we've started, we've been involved in quite a number of uh, major projects. Like we supplied uh, uh, equipment and personnel to the, the, the set of Anna and the King. We did the location sound as well as sound design and sound finishing for Putri Gunung Ledang. And uh, we have also done numerous uh, uh, location recordings for National Geographic, uh, Discovery Channel, Disney, and, and all these people who come to Malaysia to shoot. Okay, mm. great. I'm actually not surprised at all. Mm. Um, it's no secret. I'm a big fan and also a highly respect of all the things that you've always done. Um, let's take it back a little bit to the uh, past. When you first started uh, your first entrepreneurial business venture, when was the first time you decided and what was the business venture? Well, I became an entrepreneur, uh, not by design like okay. yourself. I actually uh, became an entrepreneur rather by accident. Okay. I was very happily working for a British company at the time called Rediffusion, which was a cable broadcasting station, which eventually became Red FM. Okay. Yeah. And I was very happy there, being a radio DJ and program manager and all that. And also, uh, at that time, I was also very popular, uh, a, a popular choice for people doing voiceovers for television and radio commercials. 
So I was happily chugging along until one day my boss uh, in the broadcasting company called me into his office and said, uh, Patrick, I noticed that, um, you know, from the, the statements every month that you're actually taking home quite a large amount of money in voiceover fees <laughs> from the company. At that time, I think I was I have quite a lot of money. And he said, you know, I would like to draw your attention to the terms of your employment, which clearly states that um, any uh, income generated from your professional talent, in this case your voice, rightfully belongs to the company. Okay. But since you have been a model employee for almost 11 years, <laughs> uh, the company will make an exception and allow you to keep 50% of your earnings. Okay. So I looked at the boss and I said to him, you must either be very stupid or you think that I am, you know, <laughs> because you are paying me a monthly salary of 1,275 ringgit net. And if you say or if you claim that you've been looking at my statements for the past few months, you will know that my average income from voiceovers is close to 10,000 ringgits a month. And you're asking me to make a choice? So I said, all right, fine, I quit. Okay. So I quit my job at the broadcasting station and at that time it was just the beginning of the disco phenomenon. Okay. Uh, discotheque had, disco had just happened in America, it was sweeping the world and it was coming to Malaysia and people were demanding or wanting to have the disco experience. So I thought, yeah, that's, that's a very good idea. I'm a DJ. I'm fairly well known. Um, I've got a big library of records, records, you know, those big round black <laughs> things. And I said, uh, why don't I offer myself as um, a DJ playing disco for parties and stuff? So I started doing that and it became very, very popular. And uh, then the demand became so great that I, I decided, yeah, this is a viable business. So I poured some money into it with a few friends and uh, uh, we bought extra equipment and uh, built DJ consoles. We started employing people and so on and that was how, how the, the music machine business started.